r slash divorce six month later divorcing my husband was a huge mistake this one is long but worth it for everyone to read if i could give anyone a piece of advice for divorce it would be to not do it under normal circumstances if your spouse is beating you are threatening you or your children then of course get out and fast in my case there was no abuse we were together for eight years that was mostly good and we have four kids Right around five years I got a promotion at work and I got it in my head that my ex-husband was dragging me down, or at least holding me back from more success and a better life. We never had a lot of money but with my promotion I was now making more than he was. I started working longer hours and at the same time his hours were cut so he was at home more. I really began to resent him because he was home and because he got to spend time with our kids. Most nights when I got home, they were already getting ready for bed if not already sleeping. After a few months of my new job it was clear to me that things were not going well at home without me there. Some nights the dishes weren't done when I got home, or the kids hadn't eaten or whatever else I could think of to be mad at him about. It really didn't matter. He kept saying that he would try harder but that it was hard being home all the time. That always made me really mad, for the next couple years things kept getting worse. My hours weren't any shorter and his were on and off full time. There was no convenient time for him to be working full time because of my hours but we also needed the money. Whenever he would tell me that he could get extra hours I would always complain and the less hours he worked the more I complained that he wasn't bringing in enough money. Whenever he brought up the contradiction, I would tell him that he needed to figure it out. I knew that it would bother him so I started saying that a lot and for everything that I could. I really started to resent him, and I pulled away from him. I knew that it was hurting him, but I didn't care. If he didn't want to be hurt, then he would at least try to make me happy. I used that same thing to justify when I started to talk to another guy at work. I thought he was just a friend but talking at work turned into texting at home and then pictures and videos and then trying to sneak some alone time with him. I knew that it was wrong, but it made me feel so alive, and my husband had not made me feel like that in years. I was tired of being unhappy and I was doing this for me. The worst was the night that I came home at a reasonable time and found that he had cleaned the whole house, cooked the whole family dinner and picked out a movie for all of us to watch together. This would have made me swoon a couple years earlier, but that night I couldn't even look at him and I pretended to be sick. I spent the rest of the night in bed while he waited on me and checked on me and even made me different food and brought it to me in bed. It made me feel terrible, and then it made me angry that he made me feel that way and by the end of the night I was texting with the other guy, over the next month or two from that night it did not matter what he did. He was wrong just for breathing most days. He would get so upset with how I was treating him and I would just wait and egg him on into losing it because I knew it would happen eventually. After most of the fights we had he would apologize for whatever I told him he did wrong if there even was something, but I never did. I would usually find a way to make him feel even worse. I knew that I was right because he was wrong and that was all that mattered to me. I even pretended that I didn't care when he found out about my relationship with the guy from work. It really destroyed me inside to see him holding back tears, but I wasn't going to let him see that. He was at his weakest and that was when I chose to tell him that I wanted a divorce. I could almost hear his heart shattering inside his chest. He talked and fought and said that we could work through it together. I really wasn't interested in fixing our marriage, but I mostly ended things with the other guy but only because I knew I could get it back if I wanted it. I could see that he was trying and occasionally I would let him know, but for the most part I kept being a huge bitch to him for any and all reasons that I could think of. I'm not sure how much more the man could have done to make me happy besides finding a job that paid enough for me to not have to work at all. He said that he was looking but looking and finding are two different things. It was around this time that I discovered this group and a few others. I started posting things about him, from my perspective only, and I got so much positive feedback for how I was feeling that I knew I was right, the more I posted the more validation that I got. It wasn't just me who knew that ex-husband wasn't worth keeping around. I had the whole internet telling me how terrible he is. I started saying awful things to him and even outright ignoring him. I was so confident with mine and everyone else's opinion that I contacted a lawyer and within a couple weeks had filed for divorce. I continued to use this site and a couple others to validate my feelings and for encouragement to go through with it, and finally it was done. It went pretty smoothly. Ex-husband didn't ask for much besides to not get divorced and to try to work it all out. I didn't care about that though. He was broken but I was free. I could do whatever I wanted without having to feel any guilt or answer to anybody. It was an amazing feeling of freedom. It didn't last long though. In the first month after he moved out, I missed garbage day three times. There was also rarely a single clean dish and the laundry sat in piles so long that I had to start doing the sniff test to see if it could be worn again. 
I also never saw my kids more miserable. My oldest had seen some of the messages from the other guy months earlier and she knew that ex-husband still wanted to try to work it out. It didn't take her long to stop talking to me at all except to say that she wanted to go to ex-husband house. The others all told me that they wanted to live with ex-husband too. I did my best to try to make them happy, but I ended up just buying them toys all the time and the happiness only lasted minutes. I also was having a lot of trouble with work, being alone I couldn't work all those extra hours that I was expected to. I finally gave in and started calling ex-husband to watch the kids. He would always come over as soon as he could, and he always asked me if I needed anything. When I would get home, I would find clean dishes and laundry and even dinner sometimes. He would never say too much after I got home. He would just say to call him if I needed anything and leave. One night he took out the garbage and brought it to the curb because it was garbage night and I forgot again. He always looked so sad when it was time to go. Finally, after a couple months my friends convinced me to go out on a date. It was for dinner and a movie and I was excited and hopeful, but at dinner I started getting a feeling of overwhelming guilt. It got so bad that I ended up not even going to the movie. A week and about a million tears later I was on a therapist's couch. I told her everything that had happened starting with the promotion that I got at work. She did not agree with me or with any of the encouragement to divorce that I got. I ended up in her office two and sometimes three times a week, and the more that I talked to prove that I was right, the more that I started to see how wrong I was. It was truly heartbreaking. I don't know if I cried as much in my whole life as I did in the first month in her office. After about $2,000 of therapy sessions I learned that my ex-husband had his faults, but I figured out that mine were so much worse. I did so many awful things and said awful things that I wouldn't want to be with me, but he did. I still remember him asking me in the meeting with the lawyer to please not go through with it. I did go through with it though, and then later I bragged on here how great it felt. I was so wrong, and now I can see it. A couple weeks ago I went outside with him when he was leaving the house. I asked him about getting back together. When he looked at me his eyes were full of tears and a couple went down his cheeks. He told me that he didn't know if he could. He said that the pain has been too much for too long and that if we got back together that I might just turn around and do it to him again. He said that he always thought that I would realize how much he loved me and stop up until I signed the divorce papers and let out a big over-exaggerated sigh of relief. He said that hurt him more than anything else and that he doesn't know if he can ever trust me again. I don't blame him. I destroyed a man who looking back was a great husband. I deprived my kids of having a great father in the house with them and I took his kids away from him. And me, the one who pushed for the divorce expecting happiness and a life of freedom, spend all my free time sitting at home or sitting on a therapist's couch. Please don't just take the advice of anyone on this site or any other about getting a divorce. If your marriage is bad look at yourself first and see if you can make changes. This is advice for men and women. Getting divorced is not fun. Being divorced is not fun. And seeing your husband broken and your children never happy because of your actions is the most painful experience that I can imagine. I wish all of you well and hope that you will give your marriages a second chance. Now for some comments. Comment 1. To OP, my ex-wife could have written this post so I feel like I may have an idea how your soon-to-be ex-husband feels. A year after the divorce my ex-wife came to visit the kids and begged for me to talk to her as I was NC on any topic not about the kids. She lamented her cheating, her cruelty, her constant fault-finding, but mostly she said she missed my friendship and could we please try again. Oh, how I longed to hear those words. I would have paid any price, made any promise, done anything to try again, but for the divorce. She was so happy hitting me over the head with it and how happy she was going to be without me in her life. It broke me. My heart and my soul, my self-worth were tied up in our marriage and she destroyed all of it. I couldn't possibly go back to her. I had escaped a prisoner of war camp, never to return. Dear OP, you are asking your ex-husband to return to a POW camp with only the weakest promise got the commandant won't torture and cruelly abused him this time. It is too big of a risk for him to take. Comment 2. This sounds like some fantasy thought I have about my wife and her realization post-divorce that she made the wrong choice. I don't expect it to ever happen and even if I somehow got her to read this, she'd just say that's nice I won't ever feel the way I should about you again sorry. The a couple weeks ago. Paragraph is me, she has told me numerous times that she thinks I am a great husband, as do her friends, and a wonderful father, but we've grown apart and she doesn't feel for me like that anymore and won't again. She says there is no one else, now, and there is no motivation or reason to think otherwise, no fault state. Life isn't always greener but you can't force someone to see that. 
I wouldn't take you back. It's hard to say, but my wife had a quick turnaround after five months of wanting divorce after some household catastrophe and things were the best they've been in years, then two months later got more distant and was back on divorce train. After thinking cohabitation might be possible, we're now realizing that we need to figure out how to afford two households and go on. I don't want it. I think she's having a midlife crisis after being a stay-at-home mom for a decade and then getting back into the workforce. None of what I think matters. She is not happy and blames me. Whatever childhood dreams she hasn't accomplished are because I've held her back, despite working multiple jobs so she could be a stay-at-home mom. Sometimes life serves up a shit sandwich and you either starve and die or take a bite. It leaves a bad taste, but eventually you get over it. I'm mid chi right now and if she signed the papers and came back at me, I'd tell her to enjoy her own shit sandwich I'm full, comment 3. I am going through the final steps in separating, trying to have two households while still paying private school tuition seemed impossible. Then eldest decided she wants to finish out high school at the public school to which we are zoned, and it is an excellent school. Eldest says she wants a larger social circle. I was not in favor but saving the private school tuition for her is a game changer. Second then, soon to be ex-wife's parents decide to help soon to be ex-wife, substantial inherited wealth, so we are finally moving forward. But here's my real point, what is it about women wanting a divorce because they are not happy? I have handled several thousand divorce cases, I have never heard a male client say to me he needs a divorce because he is not happy. The end, thanks for watching. If you could help me by clicking the like and subscribe buttons, that would be awesome. Thanks. Hey everybody, if you like my videos of car crashes, people freaking out, and Reddit content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications. Thanks.